Hi, Sadwik. Okay. So, uh, have you prepared the homework that we discussed yesterday? Yes. Okay. Are you facing any issue, any problem? No. Okay, great. So, just give me a moment. So today we are going to talk about the, we have discussed so far if else statement, the switch statement and today we are going to talk about the loops, okay. So for an example, first of all, we need to understand why do we need loops, right, and what is a loop, okay. So, so loop, loop will help you to, to do any transaction repeatedly, right, repeatedly on its own. For an example, I say I want to print uh, from 1 to 10. 1 to 10 automatically I want to print from 1 to 10 so there are two ways one of the ways is you will be giving the input and then you will be trying to display it on the screen right so but if you want to print it automatically in that case you will have to use the loop which will do the transaction on its own multiple times, right? There are two types of loops. So for loop is there and while loop. And there is another loop which is called do while. In for loop, you will also see for each loop. For each loop and there is one more loop that is called for go to loop. Okay. So the first of all we will understand the syntax for the for loop. Okay. All these loops will help you to do some transactions repeatedly. Okay. So you can say uh, the uh, syntax is going to be for then small bracket you open the small bracket then you declare some variable which will help you to will help you to repeat the transactions so you want to print from 1 to 10 right so here you initialize here you initialize the variable then you put some condition. You want it to repeat 10 times, right? From 1 to 10. So you will say, I Hello? I can't hear you. Hello?
Hello? Hello? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Hello? Uh, I can hear you now. Okay, great. 
and can you see my screen? Yeah. I don't think so. Okay, Pramod, can you please allow me to share my screen? Pramod, are you there? Pramod, are you there? So, Satvik, uh, uh, were you able to hear me while I was explaining it? No. No. No at all? No. Okay. Okay, let me share the screen first. Are you there? Okay, um, Okay, so we are back and uh, I hope you can see my screen now, right? Sadhvik? Yeah, I can Sadhvik? see your screen. Okay, great. So it's integer like I would, this is the syntax. In the first place, first you initialize a variable, right? From where you want to start. So you want to start from one and you want to go until 10, right? So you will start from one and then you will put a condition that it will not go beyond the number 10. So you will say I should be less than or equal to 10. Then it will, the loop will continue. Otherwise it will come out of the loop. Then I plus plus, you are incrementing the value of I after every iteration, right? In the first place, it will come here and then it will print I. So what is the value of I? 1. So in the first go it will print 1. Then it will go here and it will increment I by 1. So it will become 2. And 2 will be checked here if 2 is less than or equal to 10. So 2 is less than 10. Again it will print 2. Why? Because 2 is less than and equal to 10. Again 2 will be incremented and it will become 3. And again it would be checked. So 3 is less than 10. So 3 will be printed here and so on it will go until 10. After printing the number 10 it will be incremented and it will become 11. It will come here and check. So i is less than or equal to 10. Uh, so uh, the value of i is 11 now. 11 is not less or, or equal to 10. So it will come out of the loop and it will not print the value of 11. Alright. 
that make clear? Yes. Okay, great. So this was one of the loops. This is a simple for loop. This is called simple for loop. This is the traditional loop as well. Okay. So how do we write the program? So we just say public static void main string array args. Then we have the for loop here. It is of i equals to one, and i is less than equal to ten, and then i plus plus. And then you say system dot out dot print ln. So print ln will help you. It will print the value and then it will go to the next line. That's why we use print ln print line. And you will be printing the value of i. Okay, so you have some class like public class for loop example. Class closed. So this is how. You can print the value from one second. You can try this in your Eclipse. Okay. Try it and let me know. So I think I have just pasted it in the chat. It working. Just copy and paste it. There should not be any problem. Working? Yeah. Okay, cool. So now we will discuss the another loop, and that is for each loop. Okay. So first of all, we need to understand what is for each loop. Okay. So. So you uh, you got the uh, thing that the loops are used for the repetition, for iterating, for uh, doing some transaction repeatedly, or multiple times, right? Now, the for each loop is used on collections. The for each loop is used on collections. We will study about the collection collection later on right now you just need to know that collection is some collection of elements like collection of strings collection of uh, integers collection of characters right so for each loop is used to it helps to iterate the items of a collection so for an example array is one of the collections array is one of the collections of similar elements. Similar elements means it will. Uh, right now I'm saying int a r r. This is the name of my array, right? A r r, or you can say anything. Integer array. It is called array, right? So it's. It has few values like one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. It has these values, right? 
now you want to print you want to uh, show it on the output screen all these numbers okay so you can use the for each loop okay for each loop will help you to iterate through all these items and how is that possible so first of all you need to understand the syntax of the for each loop how is it written you will say for okay then kind of array you are going to use so you have the collection of integers so you will say int since you are trying to use this for each loop for a collection of integers you will in initialize with the value int okay int variable and then the colon okay then the colon and the name of your array so the name of our collection is integer array okay. and then just print the value and just print the value okay. so what we can do is we can go here and replace this Is it clear, Satvik? Yeah. Be bright. I must say, you are a bright student. You got it in just one go. The forest loop. Are you sure, Satvik? Yes. Okay. Good. So, I'm pasting it in the chat. Please try it, and. Analyze every line. Analyze every line of code. Although I will be discussing ab uh, about the collections and the array. Uh, array is the part of collection. I will be discussing it later on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, is it working, Sadhvik? Working. Okay, great. So now we will discuss about the for go to or the labeled for loop. This is also called the labeled for loop. Okay. So uh, first of all, uh, we need to understand uh, how it is used. What you need uh, the syntax should be, uh, we know that the for loop. or any loop is used to repeat some transactions right so uh, we must understand the syntax of it syntax will be we need to add a label before the loop like here you have the loop so here you can add a label right label means uh, you can say a right a colon a colon and then you can write your loop okay so what happens is why we do so so here it is label name and then you have your loop here you have your loop here right so why do we do so why do we label a loop so that 
uh, in our previous session yesterday we used the break statement break statement is used to break the switch cases right when you are working in a in switch case the break is used there to come out of the switch if it has found the valid case then the break helps you to come out of your switch case in the same way when you are using the labeled for loops you can use the break or you can use the continue there is another keyword that is continue so the break or continue will help you to continue with the transaction or or come out of the loop break will help you to come out of the loop or continue will the continue statement will help you to continue with the transaction okay so if i say okay let me show you an example then i will explain more about it okay so you have the um let me just remove this one okay so you have the label a a and then you have the for loop You have the for loop here, and then after you have BB, another label, right? And then another loop, another loop which has J. This is also called the nesting of loops. Okay, loop within another loop is called nesting of loops. right and then we have we can use the we can use some if condition here like if i equals to equals to 2 and and if j equals to equals to 2 then we would like to break a a okay. see what we are doing on the basis of condition we are breaking the loops so if i will break a a then it will come out of a a the loop a a it will come out of the loop a a right and then once it it comes out it will print the value of i it will print the value of i We have we close this one. We closed this one here, right? And then we close this one here. We need two more curly braces for the main and for the class. Okay. So what will happen is. see the loop how how the loop works it will come here so i equals to 1 then it will come here j equals to 1 okay so i is not greater than i is i is not equal to equal to 2 i is 1 right now i is 1 in the first iteration the value of i is 1 and the value of j is One, right? So it will print one. It will print one, right? The value of i. Then, uh, what we can do is let me also print the value of j. So we can just put a space here. and then we can print j okay so we can print the value of so it, in the first iteration it will print 1 the value of i equals to 1 and the value of j equals to 
it will print both the values for i and j then it will come here it will be incremented the value of i you can hear me right satve yeah okay just confirm me so the value of i will be incremented and it will become 2 and j will also become 2 right so now here when i is equal to equal to 2 and j is equal to is equal to 2 it 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 asks to break a a so it will come out of this loop when it comes out of this loop then it will it will be printing the value of j let me show you so i'm just trying to see the value now so let me try it one more time okay so what happened look at this in the first iteration it went to 1 1 okay in the second iteration it again went to 1 2 why because because it came out of that but still when the value of i is 1 it is saying it is true when the value of i is 1 it is saying the value is true but uh, but when it is 2 it is coming out of the first loop so it will just not print it will not just go beyond the value of i uh, when the value of i is 2 right so it will just be print in every iteration for i it will be printing 1 1 1 1 1 and for j it will be printing 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 got it satvik oh yeah at the end it says 2 1 why is that Okay, we can fix it. There is something wrong with the condition. Let me just see. So let's see. Let us just the logic. Okay, let me just. What I'm going to do is I'm going to break the BB. Just want to see the output. In this case, I am breaking the BB. Okay, okay. So when you are breaking the BB, it's giving the. Okay, so what happens is we'll have to see the first. The first iteration it will say i is one and b is one. Okay. The second iteration i is i is two. 
and b equals to 2. So it is skipping this part. Okay. It will again go go back. It will print in the place of where it should print in the second phase. In the second iteration, it should print 2, but it will print 1 for i, and then it will print for b, it will print 2. So 1, 2, then i is. So it's basically something like this, right? After printing the value 10, right? It will go back. It will go back to the loop, the first loop, right? And it is still the first loop is still satisfying the condition. Why? Because the value is one because the value is value is 1 it will become 2 right and then it will come a state of way and it will print the value of 2 where is that okay uh, actually i'm not able to explain it to you right now because you don't know the nest existing of the loops right now so let's let me explain a little more about the nesting of the loops so what happens is you have a for loop here and i equals to one then you say i you must have seen programs like you can print triangles one star then there is two star then there is three star Four star, five star, six star, right? So first loop is for the line, the number of lines. So how many lines do you have? One, two, three, four, five, six, right? Six lines. And the second loop is so it will go i is less than equal to six. And I plus plus. Okay. And the another loop. Okay. The first line it should print one value. In the second line, it should print two values. Okay. So again it will start from the value of one and they will In J equals to one and J is less than equal to six and J plus plus. And what are you trying to print? You are trying to print the stars. You will say system dot out dot print ln. then you will close this curly braces in the same way so what happens is in the first line it will come here in the first line see now how it is going to work So the first line starts with the number 1. It will come here and it will print from 1 to 6. It will come here and print in the first row, it will print 1 to 6. Why so? Because it will print all the values. For the first line, it will print all the values, which is in the second loop. Okay. So it keeps on working on the second loop. To complete the iteration okay and then it moves and then it moves to the second line and again it will work 
entirely for the second loop. Okay. So in the first line, it will say one, two, three, four, five, six. In the second line, it will become two. In, in the second line, it will come here and it will again start printing from the value one till six. You see how it is working? Uh, yeah, so the first loop is for the number of lines and the second loop is for the values. If you want to print the pyramid, this, this triangle, if you want to print this triangle, then what you need to do is you need to make sure that in the first line it prints only one value. And how is that possible? You can just say j is less than equal to i so in the first line it will print one value in the second line when the i will be two it will print two values getting my point Perfect. yeah in the first line in the first line it will just print one value then in the second line two values you can try this this in your eclipse and let me know Is it fine? Show the bunch of stars. Is it showing the triangle? It showed me a bunch of stars. Okay, not the triangle. Can you just paste it? Okay, so do one thing after the inner loop after the inner loop this is the inner loop right here so don't go to the next line here go to the next line here so print will just print the value, it will not go to the next line. We want to go to the next line after printing all the values. Right? So go to the next line here. Okay, try this.
Is it working? Sapik? The last system out when it says there's an error on it. Okay, this is print line. So just make it print line. Print Ellen. Oh, okay. The last. It showed me a triangle. It worked. So this is what you wanted, right? Yeah. We were looking for. So it's fine now. Okay. So I wanted to say that the first loop is for the number of lines and the second loop is for the values. So it goes to the second line. It, it goes to the second loop. And first of all, it prints all the values then goes to the next line, then goes to the first loop. Okay? So here, in our program, what it is doing is, it is coming here when the value is 1 for i, right? It's printing all the values. Right? So i is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, right? J is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right? In the first iteration. Then yeah. the I then the I becomes 2. Okay? But J is again starting from the value of 1. Right? The moment, the moment J is becoming 2, it's coming out of the first loop. And it's not printing anything. Because we are breaking the AA. We broke the AA. Got the point? No? That's it. Understand. I should, I mean, explain it to you further more. No, I, I got it. Okay. Okay. Now, so this is you understand the nesting of loops now. So you can also work on the table. You can try printing the table like the table of two, right? So two, four, six. So print table from two to ten. On the first line, it will say two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, whatever it is. Then it will take a tab and it will print. It will come here. So beneath the three, it will print six. I mean, for for two, for three, like you see in your books, uh, it will print all the tables from two to ten. So for the number of lines, for number of lines, you will use the first loop. The first loop will say, so you want to start from 2 and go until 10. So the number of lines will be 8. Getting my point? The first loop will go until 8. The second loop will go until 10. Because every table, table for a particular number will have 
10 values. So it will have 10. So this will go until 8. This will go until 10. It will start from um, and where, what, are you, what are you going to print? You are going to print a table. So for table you will say the value, the number of line, I mean it should start from 2, should go until 10 and the number of lines let it be 10 and it will multiply j with j with i so it will come here 1 is it going to work okay i want you to put some logic i want you to print a table can you do that can you try it Perfect. you need to use the nesting of loops I can try it. Okay. Okay, so leave it right now. This is your homework and again I'm giving you some more homework. So what we did was we just printed a pyramid, right? A triangle. Yeah. Then now we use the uh, for go to loop. We use the what? The for go to loop. So you you don't use the go to use the, the nesting of the loops like we just did for the triangle. Oh, the messing of the loops? The messing of the loops? Nesting of the loops, right. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, so that was in order, okay. Uh, we just printed a triangle. Now we need to print a pyramid. How, how, when you add two triangles from its back end, when you add two triangles, it becomes a pyramid. Getting my point? No? You want to print two triangles now and then you need to add them so that it will show, it will appear as a pyramid. Okay, that may be a little difficult for you. So, uh, okay, leave it this, the pyramid right now. Do one thing. So, we started from 1, right? So, uh, the uh, the number of stars were 1 at the line number 1. But right now, it will start with the maximum value. And it will go, in every line, it will be decrementing. Okay. I want you to print this. Okay. okay. Perfect. Okay. So the number of lines, remember while attempting the table and while attempting this, uh, inverted triangle, this is inverted, you need to use the nesting of the loops, okay? Yeah. So, then, so before doing, before doing this two, attempting this two, print one to ten, okay? Print 200. Okay. So 
this will just take a simple loop not the nesting it will make you familiar with the loops after that start nesting of the loops and do the table one and then this inverted triangle okay then we will meet tomorrow i uh, you know uh, i join late a little late because i come from uh, office and i get stuck in the traffic sometimes so pardon me okay for that and uh, i'll uh, not be late more than 10 minutes because you know it happens i get stuck in the traffic okay traffic got it yeah Okay then, see you, see you tomorrow.